In season one of the hit Showtime drama, Your Honor, we watched the unraveling of Brian Cranston's Michael Desiato, a dedicated widower father and respected New Orleans judge, who would do anything to protect his son. Spoilers ahead, while fighting systemic injustices in his day job, Michael must descend into the dark underbelly of New Orleans crime after his son Adam is involved in a fatal hit and run, one that sets off a chain reaction, impacting the lives of every character in the show. As it happens, the person Adam killed is not just any young man. The boy you hit this morning is Jimmy Baxter's son. Jimmy Baxter is the head of the most vicious crime family in the history of this city. And so our previously upstanding judge is forced to mix himself with corrupted officials and criminals, becoming one himself. In a season full of twists and turns, heavily underlined by secrecy, revenge, familial duty, and gray ethics, we're brought to the precipice when tragedy strikes the Desiato family once again. The fallout from this undoubtedly causing another ripple effect of consequences. And we won't have to wait much longer to find out where all the pieces fall. Streaming Friday, January 13th on Showtime, we'll see what has become of Cranston's anti-hero. Is Michael destined to perpetuate a cycle of revenge? Or can he restore his integrity and learn to live the life of distinction he once held? Here's our take on the first season of Your Honor, how one man's actions can cause a chain reaction of anguish, and how that cycle is set to continue in season two. We begin, Your Honor, with what the entire first season meditates on, a man running in the gray. Judge Michael Desiato sprints through the streets of New Orleans towards his wife's grave on the anniversary of her murder. We're shown a good and honorable man who is dedicated to upholding justice. He even travels to a defendant's home to disprove a lying police officer's testimony. I stood at the doorway at 5700 Flood Street, just as you did. Now, here's my question. Do you have See around corner eyes, or are you a liar? But on that very same day, his morals are tested when his son, the only direct family he has left after the death of his wife, makes a choice that leaves them both in a deadly predicament. Michael is initially stunned by Adam's confession to the hit and run, but we see a first glimpse of how this upstanding judge might abuse his privilege, as his decades-long legal career gives him and Adam a jumpstart on damage control. Before his son can even finish telling him what happened, Michael begins coaching him on how to tell the story of the accident. You stopped, didn't you? You stopped, and you got out of the car and you tried to help him, but then you panicked, and is that, is that right, Adam? They arrive at the local police station, primed to do the right thing and turn Adam in. That is, until Michael realizes whose son was killed. Michael knows that the infamous New Orleans crime boss, Jimmy Baxter, will stop at nothing to avenge the death of his son. Whoever you are, you should know you will be found. Confessing to what he had done would be a death sentence for Adam, which changes everything. And so the downward spiral domino effect begins. Michael's character deteriorates throughout season one from an honorable judge to a manipulative criminal mastermind. He intentionally and tactically uses his legal acumen, white privilege, and government connections to orchestrate the absolution of his son. One of the first favors he calls in is from his best friend, Charlie Figaro, a well-connected mayoral candidate. Robin's car. I need it to disappear, Charlie. No questions asked. Charlie, mistaking Michael's request as a form of grieving his dead wife, obliges. Michael chooses to let Charlie remain uninformed of his true motives, despite understanding the consequences for anyone involved in the cover-up of Rocco Baxter's death. Michael's decision to try and disappear the car ends up implicating another innocent and uninvolved black person, Kofi Jones. And the injustices of our justice system can be easily examined in a side-by-side -side comparison of what happens to Adam Baxter and Kofi Jones once the police are in their proximity. The wall. Get the wall. Kofi is coincidentally the eldest son of low-income black mother Fimale, who Michael sought to protect from corrupt police in the season's first episode. Knowing her son isn't a hardened criminal but is affiliated with the gang The Desire Crew for survival, Fimale begs Michael to help save her son to no avail. Okay. You, you, you a good man. Just, just, please, please help my son. No, it's, it's not my case. I know, but you, you can talk to somebody, then you, then you can get help. Look, I cannot help you. In Michael's callous response, we see his darker side emerging, undermining his very own work. This exchange also shows the unfair weight of personal connections, or lack thereof, in our justice system and how they can literally be life or death. 
Out of guilt, and perhaps in an effort to reclaim his once more honorable sense of self, Michael calls in another favor, this time from his protege and love interest, Lee Delamar. He asks her to represent Kofi in hopes of reducing his sentence and keeping him safe. Ultimately, Kofi remains in the crosshairs of Michael and Adam's choice to cover up the hit and run, and is murdered in jail by Jimmy Baxter's eldest son, Carlo. And in an act of further mind-blowing retaliation, the Baxter's matriarch, Gina, pushes her husband, Jimmy, to blow up the house of Kofi family while she believes they are all inside. This leaves Eugene, Fimale's second oldest son, an orphan who has to bury his entire family. Only after Kofi's death and his family's execution does Jimmy Baxter learn that he and his son have killed the wrong people. Lil Mo got a call that stood at Volvo the day after your son was killed. I don't know who killed your son, but it showed a f one Kofi. The Baxters and Desiados become more and more entangled as Jimmy works tirelessly to figure out who actually is responsible for the death of his son, narrowing in on Michael. 911 call. Came from a cell tower in Shelmet. He came here, wanted to see the surveillance video. You still have the footage? Got erased. He deleted the footage? Yeah. Complicating matters even further, Adam Desiato and Fia Baxter, Jimmy's only daughter, begin a romantic relationship. I'm gonna stop right in front of your house, lean on the horn, and kiss you like you've never been kissed before in your life. And Lee, Kofi's lawyer, toes closer to the truth as she seeks justice for his murder, working with the Jones family's sole survivor, Eugene. But Carlo Baxter evades the consequences of murdering Kofi, being found not guilty when Michael, once again, abuses the power of his judicial position by manipulating the case's evidence and the jury pool. Michael is forced to confront an awful truth. He and Jimmy Baxter aren't so different after all. They'll both do anything to protect their families. I don't want to lie anymore. But he is my son. Alert! To viewers who have not seen the season finale of Your Honor, massive spoilers are ahead. With his compromised moral compass, Michael has betrayed everything he's lived to uphold and all the people who've trusted him most in exchange for what he believes will ensure his son's protection. But he fails to save Adam, an ending that was alluded to in an earlier episode. You know what losing a child gives you? Terrible, visceral pain an overwhelming sense of failure. Nothing matters. So you're capable of anything. The cycle of revenge that was kicked off by Rocco's death and solidified by Kofi's ends Adam's life in the final moments of season one. As Eugene seeks retribution for his brother's life against the Baxters, he points his gun at Carlo, shoots and misses, killing Adam instead. Adam dies in Michael's arms, gurgling blood, hauntingly similar to Rocco's final moments. And we hear the same Mozart song that played at the end of episode one as the father-son pair watched the Shawshank Redemption together, a movie underscored by wrongful imprisonment, but ultimately freedom, something it seems no family in your honor will ever really get. We're forced to reckon with the weight of Michael's actions, how he spun a web of lies that instead of freeing him, traps him within it, how everything he did to protect Adam did the very opposite, and how identical he and Jimmy are now, down to the loss of both of their sons. Your Honor's first season spun a tragic tale underscored by themes of mismanaged grief, misguided revenge, the failures of our justice system, the boundless privilege of white men in America, and family, specifically the lengths we'll go to protect them. Season two is primed to explore these themes further, led by a broken grieving Michael who is a shell of his former self. We are reintroduced to Michael Desiato as an emaciated, ill-kept, and bearded version of himself, a look that Brian Cranston impressively achieved on his own. Without his wife and son, Michael has become completely unmoored. You've suffered unimaginable loss. Do you believe that you pose a danger to yourself? Although it seems he will have a chance to unravel more of the mystery surrounding his wife's untimely death and the infidelity that potentially led to it. Thousands of things your mom was. One bad thing that she did, so one mistake, one mistake, it shouldn't define who you are. Despite the fact that Michael seems without reason to live, he's offered one through the introduction of a federal prosecutor, Olivia Delgado, played by Rosie Perez. I am offering you a chance to help bring down the single greatest threat to New Orleans, to atone for what you have done. But whether or not Michael has the will to help Olivia bring down Jimmy Baxter remains to be seen. I can't do this. I'm, I'm, I'm not refusing, I am telling you. 
I, I don't have the ability. The case findings or the possibility of righting some of his wrongs may be enough to bring Michael back from the edge. But it seems there are some other ways Michael is seeking redemption and forgiveness for what he's done, including trying to absolve his friend, Charlie Figaro. It was a car, not a body. It was a coffin with a set of headlights. Meanwhile, in the Baxter's world, Fia grieves the loss of Adam. Oh, no, 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 no! as Carlo is poised to step into Jimmy's shoes and take his rightful place in the leadership of their crime family. You know who I'm looking for? The ever-grieving Gina appears to be shying away from confronting her pain and leaning into the externalizing we've learned is integral to who she is. But anger is where I want to live. Anger is where I flourish. And war brews for the crime organization and the local desire gang, where we find Kofi's brother Eugene entangled. Eugene, who was last seen fleeing the scene of Adam's murder, Carlo's attempted murder on foot, will have to deal with the repercussions of his failed revenge. Because Big Mo, the matriarch of the Desire crew, in all likelihood won't take kindly to Eugene going against her direct order to leave the Baxters to her and her long game. Your problem become my problem. After an electrifying first season wrought with tragedy, we're excited to see Michael pick up the pieces and potentially get a redemption arc. We've learned from season one that withholding the truth, skirting the law, and dancing with the devil only leads to more destruction. While nothing can bring Adam back, if Michael can work with the feds to bring down the Baxter family, Perhaps his character, the lawful judge we met in the very first episode, can be restored. According to Cranston, who is also an executive producer of Your Honor, the first season was where the central character compromises his principles and loses himself, and the second season is about redemption and where in our society, in the larger picture, and where in our story, on a more micro picture, does redemption fit, sorrow, and forgiveness? Is there a place for that in our world? What do you think will happen in season two of Your Honor? And what are you most looking forward to? Let us know in the comments below.